Yeah, you guys that. really are like the hip hop early morning, late night talk show. The Breakfast Club is the most powerful, popular, urban radio show in America. Yeah. Made it! Live from the Black Mothership in New York City, DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God, and Jess Hilarious. Thank y'all for being cultural leaders, man. I appreciate what y'all do for the culture. Collectively known as Breakfast Club, bitches! I'm always nervous when I do the Breakfast Club because sometimes you say stuff and it's just gonna get you in trouble. Everybody, wait, come! This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? What's up, y'all? This is your girl, B from Bankhead, the real Atlanta in the building. Good morning. Hey, good morning. What's, up, What's B? happening? Get it off your chest. Look, I got to get this off my chest. We got a lot of people coming to Atlanta talking about they're from Atlanta. And baby, this is the real Atlanta. So I wanted to go ahead and put um, the nonprofit up out on the map. It's called Forever I Love Atlanta. Forever spell F U R. We black people in the neighborhood that represent all the animal lovers that's real in Atlanta. Because you got so many white people kissing cats, acting like people don't. I know too many dudes out here taking care of more pit bulls than they kids. We love our animals over here. So whatever they got going on, it ain't true. Go ahead and follow your girl. Follow the little prophet. I represent it, Atlanta. I'm so oh, confused. First of all, oh, oh, I need to know what this. Non- oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! What is this nonprofit about? First of all, because I'm so okay, confused. So, you hit us with about three different things just now. Okay, so I have a nonprofit. We represent the people of Atlanta who love their pets. Uh, seeing so many people be talking about Atlanta the hood. We don't care all this different stuff. We care about our animals. So I started a nonprofit. To change what the the people who look like animal can look like. They always got some white lady kissing the kid. It's, no, show the thug. Show, got you, show got the you. little same things out here shaking it. You know what I'm saying? Because we out here loving and caring about our neighborhood too. So don't not? try to kick us out. We the real Atlanta. Why not call it Forever I Love Animals? It's called Forever I Love Atlanta because we love not only our animals, but we love Atlanta too. And look, I represented <laughs> Atlanta last year on the Puppet Super Bowl. On Animal Planet and Discovery Channel. It's up. Bankhead in the building. Zone one. Go follow your girl and show your love for all the people out there showing love to the pets and the animals in the neighborhood. Love thy neighbor and love thy pet. Love thy neighbor and love thy pet. Okay. Even if they're not from Atlanta, love them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hi, it's Malia. How you doing? What's up, Malia? Get it off your chest. Yeah, so I seen a story about some. Basically, this this guy, he's white, and he basically called black people dogs subliminally, and he was referring to um, Beyonce coming out with the country music and yeah, crossing over the country. Yeah, John Snyder. Yeah. Oh, that's the guy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, from Dukes of Hazard. I, I felt like I'm going through so much right now. I just felt like I don't know rage. I don't know. I just felt some type of way. I couldn't do it. Well, swing on him when you see him. No, no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> I don't even mama. fight no more. I done got grown. Oh, good. Okay, okay, okay. Well, then you, you, you don't want to do nothing then. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> no, I want to do a lot. I'm, I'm trying to do a lot. So. People it's just want to call the radio station and tweet and all of that. No, man, I'm tired of this. You don't like something, swing on the person Stop. when you see him. Swing on the person and then Stop. get knocked out or shot or anything. Shot, knocked out. Well, she trying to take well, up with well, well, Beyonce. Well, exactly. Well, shut it up then. You ain't going to do that. Oh, uh, my God. That's get why it's called Get It Off Your Chest. chest 800 585 We kiss the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up! Whether you're mad or blessed, it's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Trey out here in South Carolina. What's going on, man? What's up, Trey? Trey what up? What part of SCU calling from? Uh, Murder Beach. Hey, okay. Get it off your chest, Trey. Hey, man. So this f- traffic out here is crazy. Hey, no cursing, man. You no can't cursing. effing curse, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I'm sorry, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> I don't even know what y'all think about the traffic out here, man. We're, South Carolina. We're not there. <laughs> we're not in Myrtle Beach. Well, I know. Come again? We're not in Myrtle Beach. How do we know what the traffic is like? Well, what do y'all think about inflation? <laughs> That's another thing. Oh, 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 oh. I tell you. Can't stand it, by the way. Thank you, Trey. Can't stand it. Can't stand I it. I got a Facebook. 
I got a baby, and I'll tell you what, I'm paying $45 for 25 diapers. It is insane. Man, I'll I, I be looking at menus in places, and I'll be like, damn, I was in the hotel yesterday, and I was like, $42? The hotel be expensive. For a piece of salmon? The hotel be expensive. <laughs> and then it'd be like a $9 <laughs> delivery fee. Man, I got time for that. I just got the $130. Yeah, no. Hello, who's this? This is Niall, baby, coming from the... Um, ATL from New York. What's going on, y'all? Yeah, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Jess Hilarious. Congratulations on your baby. Congratulations Thanks. on your success on your shows. Congratulations on the new job, baby. Thank you so much. Okay, now, let's get into it. Where's Uncle Snacky? I'm right here, sir. Oh, don't call him. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, uh-huh. Here we go. Let's get into this. Your gayness is out of control, sir. The who? The we had to talk about yesterday. <laughs> what happened yesterday? Your obsession with white men yesterday and John Cena. You talk about this man used to wrestle in wrestling trunks. John Cena only wrestled in shorts, my guy. What have you been fantasizing about? The, 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 <laughs> the denim jean shorts. Look at it, but those weren't wrestling trunks. Those were regular street jean shorts. Yeah, but what that, are you fantasizing but, about, Art Charlotte? But that's when he made the transition to the John Cena character. All wrestlers wear those little uh, briefs, and you know that. Let him fantasize now. Let him fantasize. And by the way, that is what he... Uh, I'm that is. let that go on because you go hard again. I don't know exactly what you're going <laughs> over with the free balls, the P. Diddy, or what. <laughs> and and that, is, that is what he had on at the Oscars, by the way. He had on the little uh, wrestling briefs behind that little cardboard. Uh, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. I'm just driving with y'all. But hey, real talk, I just want to congratulate y'all on all y'all success. Y'all have come a freaking long way. You hear me? From the immature jackasses I used to be to the grown, mature representatives of the black community, I just want to say congratulations to all your success. And I want to give a shout-out to my wife, if that's possible. Go ahead, brother. I, uh, I just want to give a shout-out to Miss Jody Middleton. I love you. I got our kids in the car right now. We on our way to work and school. And I want to give a shout-out to our cash app. We try to buy a house, so we try to do big things, but it's hard as hell. Our cash app is um, Z, Mrs. Middleton. That's with two E's. D. Mrs. Middleton. Middleton spelt like royalty. All right, brother. Good luck. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Got the brother D1. Welcome, yes, brother. Indeed. Man, thank y'all for having me, man. I didn't know this was your first time up here. I thought for sure you was up here, but D1 was up here before. You serious, bro? I, I honestly did. Man, well, hey, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. That means my presence must be getting felt, you heard me, even if I wasn't here. That's, you know, because you, you run into D1 so much. So least, many times, like, yeah. At least back in the day, I used to run into D1 a lot. You know, yeah. D1 just be... You know, you be out. Yeah, now, be popping touching up, the people. Man. Yeah, th- there you go. Touching the people. That's that's always been the goal. I've been to your book signings before, yep. you heard me, yep. in South Carolina. Yep. I just seen you backstage at A3C. Yep. Like, really working because I, I never had anything given to me in this industry. So when I stopped being a middle school teacher back in Louisiana, I was like, damn, I'm about to be a rapper now. It was important for me to go out there and make it happen. So how you make it happen? You form organic connections. I remember when I was a teacher in Louisiana, um, I used to be Fredo Bang's middle school teacher. You heard me? Like, wow. literally. And I remember before I told my class, like, look, I'm about to stop teaching after this year to be a rapper. I was like, dang, is there going to be longevity in the music industry the way there is if I was to stay being a teacher? And all these years later, I'm still here and still ascending. You heard me? So that's God, bro. That's why I know my path is divine. Nobody could say, well, D, you had this person that put you on. God orchestrated my blessings, bro, mm-hmm. to where nobody could get the credit except for him from me. You said you were Fredo Bang's teacher. Did you know when you were teaching him that he was going to be a rapper, he was going to be a star? Not at all. No. Nah. Nah, I just knew he was a funny little dude. He was cool. He had a sense of humor. And he was smart. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he was not to be play- played with. He was serious. Mm-hmm. You know, he was serious about just demanding his respect. But he was just a cool dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just did a, uh, I did a video with him... Um Cause he put out an album called Yes I'm Sad mm-hmm. And like you know I did a video with him Encouraging him to go to Go to therapy And then I, con- I actually Connected him with a therapist That's that's coming out soon Good. He actually sat down With a real therapist I mean I, I I don't suggest people Broadcast it But if they want to I'm not mad at it What know? if people broadcast Going to therapy Yeah I mean no no, no Sitting down Like the actual session Like Oh the actual session I think they're doing The actual session I'm not sure I'm not sure Really Yeah I think 
I did that once for VH1, and I'll never do like that again. Yeah, bro, because it's hard to be transparent. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's super hard to be. I went to therapy, actually, right after that BET Cypher. I started going to therapy, bro. Mm -hmm. I was signed to RCA at the time, right? And, you know, you're on the BET Cypher. You're thinking your life about to change after this night. Like, that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And nothing changed after that night. Jesus. You know what I mean? <laughs> nothing changed after that night. So I was like... Damn, man. And I was feeling like, I know I'm the underdog in this industry because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm on some I'm on some righteous stuff. I'm on some put God first stuff. I come from New Orleans. Like, after that, I felt like I blew my shot. It started messing with me, me, with me mentally to where I was like, dang, I kind of don't even want to be here no more. Not in the industry, but on this earth. Mm -hmm. And when I started realizing, like, damn, I'm having suicidal thoughts mm. behind feeling like I'm professionally a failure, I realized I couldn't separate David from D1 at that point. Mm -hmm. And that was unhealthy, you know what I mean? And for the first time in life, I went to therapy because I was like talking to my friends that ain't getting it at this point, talking to my grandma, rest in peace, that ain't cutting it at this point. So therapy really did help me, but ultimately what helped me even more than therapy was understanding my God-given purpose. For like, man, I know who my creator is, I know why I was put here, and I was put here to glorify him. So who am I to think that my whole life is a failure because one moment didn't elevate me professionally? Let me ask you a question. You know, they consider you a, a Christian rapper, right? I don't know. I don't know if they do or not, you know? Because the reason is, is I feel like they put you in a box, but there's a lot of rappers that preach positivity and exactly. don't preach gang, don't preach guns, don't preach violence. And they're not put in that same box, but they seem to put you in that box. You know why? It's because they smart. The other rappers, they crafty. I ain't gonna say it's smart. They crafty though. They had a positive message, but then they'll sprinkle in some, but I'll smash your girl. You know what I mean? Or, or like, my partners will come spin the bin and, 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 and murk you. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll slide a little bit of that in there. Put the medicine so, in the candy. There you go. But I don't think that's, uh, I don't think, wait, you mean put the candy in the medicine? No, put the medicine in the candy. Put the medicine in the candy. Yeah. yeah. So, they, so they, and I, I don't think that that's uh, wise because I, I, it's just like, that kind of comes across lukewarm, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So with me, it's one of the things where I was like, if I got to sacrifice a little bit of professional like growth in order to say I'm going to be uncompromising about my message, I'm down for it. Because mm -hmm. wherever I get, that's where I was meant to be in God's eyes. You know, a lot of people got selfish ambition, mm -hmm. and that's different from godly ambition. What godly ambition is, God, I just want to make you proud, and wherever that land me at, I'm content. Selfish ambition is the world telling me to chase being a billionaire. The world telling me this is the newest car to get. The world telling me that this the brands I need to be rocking. That selfish ambition that had you chasing a moving target for your whole life, and I never fell victim to that, because around the time I was starting to get materialistic, I went to Ghana when I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. I saw real poverty. I thought I grew up in the hood till I went to Ghana. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I came back, man. I'm not tripping on wearing Jabo jeans no more. I'm not tripping on, you know, having to, yeah, have this jewelry and be like the hot boys or whatever. Man, I just seen people who, their joy is their weapon. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't need to carry no gun. My joy is my weapon moving forward. I want my smile to light the room up when I come in there. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been on for a long time. So you apply that to the rap game and people going to be like, oh, he different. And because he different... And he he loved God. He a Christian rapper. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If that's what people call me, cool. But a lot of people, they just like, nah, bro. He's a college professor. Mm -hmm. He's a Harvard University fellow. He's a dope rapper. He's an activist. He's, you know, he's a bunch of things. He's an author. This is my children's book I just wrote. Mm -hmm. David found his slingshot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that I wrote that at Harvard last year. And it's, it's, uh, it's based on you being bullied while growing up, right? <laughs> Man, I used to get bullied when I was in kindergarten. You know, like a lot of people. Um, And when I was bullied... At the time, I ain't know how to, you know, I ain't know how to get over that. So mm -hmm. this is an anti-bullying hip hop children's book because, uh, yeah, bro, just like the story of David and Goliath, David was able to de defeat Goliath when he found his slingshot. Mm -hmm. You feel mm -hmm. me? David didn't use nobody else's weapons when they was like, here, take this shield, take this sword. He was like, nah, I'm good on that. I know what my gift is. My gift is using this slingshot. Mm. The way I overcame my bully is I found my slingshot. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you read the book, you, you realize what my slingshot is, mm -hmm. but you realize that we all got a slingshot. And when you find your slingshot in life and you use it for the purpose God designed it for, you're going to defeat the Goliaths in your world too. All right, we got more with D1. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with D1. Charlemagne? You've been propositioned to compromise yourself at different points in this industry, right? I know what you're talking about. I don't want... If you're not going to say it, I'm not going to say it. No, let's it, say it. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Say it. Is it true that you were pressured to participate in homosexual acts for a major? Is it true that you were pressured to participate in homosexual acts for? Where'd you get that? I didn't see that on this. No, it's no, very true. No, no, it's I true. Didn't. No, it's didn't very true. Okay. I don't know how you heard that. Maybe you heard another uh, interview or something. Mm -hmm. It's very true, brother. That's when I was a local rapper trying to get on. And when people see that you are vulnerable, because they know they got the leverage, there's certain people in this industry who will be like, oh, I think he'll be willing to do something strange for a piece of change. Dang. You know what I mean? And I had somebody, I was trying to get somebody to manage me at the time. And the person I was trying to get to manage me, I drove out of town, I went to a video shoot that they were a part of. And during the video shoot, we were, we were gonna have a meeting and talk about that. And yeah, that person kinda, you know, implied to me like, yo, like I'll manage you, you just gotta do something for me. You hear me? Yikes. Yeah. And when you see them managing artists now, you like, yeah. Man, that, so actually that person- Jesus Christ. Yeah, bro, no, this a real thing, dog. Mm -hmm. This ain't no, I'm surprised y'all don't know more stories like that. I do. No, we do. We know a lot of them. So but not about you. Oh, just, yeah, just, but yeah. but it's yeah. a so it's a real thing that I know. And unfortunately, so that person, they not like some big mogul nowadays. Whatever mm. trajectory they were on, like they 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 fell off. Yeah. Right. I say that. But I want people to know that story because I could have said yes. And I could have had something to this day that's a huge skeleton in my closet that I'm like, damn, bro. Mm. Like I'm traumatized behind that and I had to do that to get on. Mm -hmm. All I had to do to get on was be real, be righteous, and be relevant. You heard me? Yeah. Keep God first, man. Absolutely. And um, I want to ask you one last thing about imposter syndrome because you got a record called Imposter Syndrome. Yeah. And you're clearly at a place of worthy right now. So when did you get to that place of worthy and was able to say, you know what, I know who I am? Anytime I'm entering a, a space where I feel like I'm being tolerated and not celebrated, shout mm -hmm. out to you for that. I got that from you. Mm -hmm. I still feel a sense of impo imposter syndrome. In the music industry, for the most part, I feel like they tolerate me, but they don't celebrate me, right? Mm -hmm. My fans, man, my fans want me to win so bad. That's why my fans, like, we'll name our own price, D. We'll pay for your album. We, we, we'll go stream it too, but we'll pay up to $1,000 for your album. I got fans that love me. But the industry, bro, I still feel like they're like, dang, D got so many followers. He making so much noise. We got to let him on this. So we got to open this door for him. But... They just tolerate me. They don't necessarily celebrate me. Mm -hmm. So I still feel imposter syndrome a lot of times when I'm in industry spaces because you can kind of tell when people are like, you too big and too powerful at this point to not have you here, but we ain't necessarily like championing you. Like you mm -hmm. can see the industry pushing some people to the forefront, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it keeps me humble. It keeps me with a chip on my shoulder. It keeps me feeling like I'm that underdog from New Orleans. I'm David with more Goliaths to have to fight. You think it's more like Sharif and Menace though? It's like, oh, here come D1 again. He bought the priest to us and tell us put the weed down and put the liquor down. And Man, that's, I, I don't bro, cause I, cause I never get that from people that like, man, you come across preachy or anything mm -hmm. like that. I'm passionate, but yeah. That's why I'm able to be on the phone with a Boosie, on the phone with a Kodak Black, you know what I mean? Kicking it with Manny Fresh, Juvenile, like all these, like, man, I'm just a regular dude, bro. I'm really just a regular dude yeah. who is simply not a slave to money, and I know who I serve, who is who we say we all serve, which is God. So because of that, cool, man, I can't be content with things that's not glorifying God that's happening on my watch and in my space. Bro, I'm on the breakfast club right now, man. I gotta say some stuff that's gonna impact people even after we long gone and we not on this earth no more. I, yeah. I understand it because the, the, the negative is definitely Shh. amplified. So when people say things like, man, how come D1 just don't reach out to some of these people personally? I mean, you gotta say what you're saying about the positive and you gotta amplify that too, right? Like that gotta be said publicly if the negative is public. Thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Listen, man. Mm -hmm. Public actions deserve public responses. We have an industry that is putting this music out publicly every day. If I go on every playlist in the world right now, it's being curated with murder music, with music that's disrespecting our women, that's glorifying drug dealing. With that being said, man, it's gotta be addressed publicly. Mm -hmm. It can't be like, why y'all hit all these individual artists up behind the scenes? And I'm not interested in, let me go at the industry. Who is the industry? I don't know who the industry is. Mm -hmm. Y'all had uh, Leo Cohen on here talking about, hey, hey Hey, I you got miles to feed too. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying, yeah. man? Listen, America doesn't want to heal your trauma. America wants to monetize your trauma. Mm -hmm. This industry don't want to heal your trauma. They want to monetize your trauma. So I'm like, let me empower the artists and the fans to simply be smarter and say, let's continue to make hip hop. Let's continue to listen to hip hop, but let's make a healthier version of it that's going to be better for all of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
Give me your Twitters and Instagrams and all that stuff, D1. All my social media is D1 Music, D-E-E, the number one music. You heard me? All my social media and on uh, streaming platforms is just D1, D-E-E, dash the number one. I got 11 albums out and counting. Y'all go check it out. Newest album from the hood to Harvard, please. And look, I want to bless y'all with these patches, limited edition Thank patches. Yeah. That's be a- real, be righteous, be relevant. That's my collaboration mm-hmm. I just did with Levi's. Envy, I got you, brother. Thank you, brother. You know I mean? Yeah, man. So that, that's my motto. When I say three is up, that's what it means, brother. Be real, be righteous, be relevant. And hip hop, I know we could do all them things mm-hmm. and we're going to win together. Congratulations you go. you on the collaboration. Brother. Thank right. y'all, man. Yes. I can't wait to see y'all next time, bro, because we got to keep Thank this journey you. going. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. Well, it's D1. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. X about me. Relationship problems. X about me. You need to beat your coworker's ass. X about me. Your coworker need to beat your ass. Call it up. It's Dr. Jess, and I'm here to fix your mess. Fix your mess. It's getting very much messy. Let me fix morning, it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, Jess Hilarious is here, and it's time for Jess Fix My Mess. We got Chris on the line. Chris, what up, Chris? Mm. What's going on, Envy? Now, Chris, What's it says on, you, got, boy? you says you got three baby mamas? Yeah, man. Good luck with your question, brother. Mm. All right, so basically just, I got three baby mamas. You know, I do for my kids, do everything I'm supposed to do as a dad, but they still interfering with my marriage that I'm in right now. How do you, how I go about that? How are they interfering with their marriage? Are you interfering with them? I mean, no, not necessarily. I try to keep the conversation as minimal as possible as long as it's concerning the kids you know okay so you are faithful to your wife i am i am faithful to my wife however due to you know recent events from the past and me not being faithful i guess Mm -hmm. with my baby mama they assume that the same situation applies with my current wife yeah oh with your current oh so you might oh they must be used to running every wife away they they run everybody off Huh. Yeah, they, they they run everybody out. Okay, now are they friends? Like, do they deal with each other? Is this no, like the no, baby no. mama club, or they don't like each other no. either? No. Okay, so this is a I I've I actually been in a situation. I was the girlfriend to a guy who had this situation going on, but ain't nobody right. run me off. This is a, this I just left. Um, you 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 pretty much made this bed for yourself by dealing with all three of them because it, it seemed like you didn't cut them off and. And now that you do want to cut them off, their regular scheduled programming, they they can't they can't change how they've been operating because you didn't you didn't nip it in the bud when you were moving on I, in other relationships. So I it, mean, I get that, but it, you know, my, my thing is this: here it is now. We we growing. I had my kids when I was seventeen. I'm thirty now. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So after a certain point of time, you got to grow up and understand that things just gonna be what it is, right? Yep. And and I think and I think as long as you keep one hundred percent communication open and being honest with your wife about what happened and why your baby mamas are that way, you and your wife should be good. I hope so. I she don't know them gal from Charleston though. No, she no, definitely don't know. Mm. You know this person? No, that Geechee, that Geechee in that voice. Oh, um, he can. No, he know, yeah, he know from Charleston. I can hear that. Yeah, I know one thing. I don't know what you sound, but I know you don't sound no thirty, sir. Are you sure? Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he yeah. sounds very wise. All right. Well, thank you, brother. Now, Jamel. Huh? Hey, Jamel. <laughs> sound for fixing my mess. <laughs> you all right, Jamel? He said, huh? <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> he in trouble. What's going on? What What's you your got? question for Jess, bro? All right, listen up. I just want. I just want to. Um, who do you think I should take a girl on a first date? It was this list. It was a list out on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It had all these different restaurants. Oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. You, should take out, you should take out a girl. What do you think I should take a, take a girl out? Well, how old are you, sir, first, so I can tell Jess? I'm 26. All right, Jess. Hey, what the hell? Where are you from? I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. I know that's right. All right. Well, cool. Um... I, I honestly feel like you should cook for her because I, I, I yeah let to be honest first I mean, she date, gotta come to the crib she might not feel yeah, she gotta to come, come to the, the crib, crib though. first date come to the oh, crib okay. I don't know well listen this is my thing because I did see I ain't I didn't see this thing on Facebook that you're talking about but I did see outside of Chili's and Applebee's when I was over in Puerto Rico and I know this is also in the states as well that they have food that contains um ingredients that will like make people get cancer and all types of other stuff. They actually have these signs outside of almost every restaurant now. Like, be careful. Okay. The food contains, we have some ingredients in our food here that contains 
um, chemicals and stuff that can promote cancer in uh, bodies. So, yeah, right. I don't think you need to take your girl. No, I mean, take this girl nowhere. You can actually um, actually go take her to sit down at a sushi restaurant. I mean, that's like almost the cleanest way to eat or you cook for. That's it. Get an Airbnb so it ain't your crib. Set it up real nice and cook okay. for. Thank you. Yeah, you welcome. He ain't know what to say because that's for real. Maybe try bowling, bro. <laughs> try bowling. Yeah, yeah, go bowling. Yeah, but I'm serious. That that's a real thing. I seen that with the food that caused cancer, but it seemed like every food was on it. Every food, it's every food, but they have to. But they now have to put that outside of their restaurants because that is true. They would They're never do that in America because they know it would f up the money. Absolutely, they know it would mess up the money. Well, well 800 you go in the store and everything would damn near have cause something cancer, on it that causes or something, something that can cause cancer. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Puerto Rico is America, sadly. And that's right. where it was at. Well, Jess fixed my mess. 800 585 1051. Call Jess right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Drewski. How y'all doing? Welcome man? back. Yeah. Left Black and Holly Fivik. How are you, brother? Man. I'm good, man. I feel good. I saw you on Ari Melba uh, on MSNBC. Man. I, I don't know why I was on there, brother. <laughs> I, uh, I'm confused on why they put me on the news. But you know, I, man, I got a PR, man. I don't know what he got me doing. Yeah. I don't know. I just agree with what they tell me to do. <laughs> I showed up. I'm showing up. I, I didn't even write, wear the right attire, so I just was... Right. Mm -hmm. I like how you didn't act like you knew what was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just I let them know straight up. I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> I loved it. Negotiations. Yeah, yeah, negotiations. Politics. Man, politics. Now, when you talk about remorse. I know, yeah, I know they talking about something, so I'm like, hey, I'm going to just try to blend in. I ain't even, <laughs> I'm not going to try to do too much. I'm going to just try to blend in on here, man. With the hoodie on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Ari be tapped in the coaches, so I'm sure Ari knew who Drewski was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhat, somewhat. That dude, uh, he, he's very hip, and he, he knows what's going on. He was reciting lyrics and stuff behind mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what that guy. And it works for you because I mean, you know, you still ended up getting a viral moment. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And it's it was funny. Yeah, yeah, comedian, yeah. So yeah nah, that, yeah. So the PR yeah. ended up working. It was like reverse of what it was supposed to do. I think we were supposed to be on there talking about um, me going to the White House or mm -hmm. yeah, dogs in the White House. Man, listen, you went to the White House? Yeah, yeah, I went like a year ago. You had a dog. No, it's. I don't know why they had me talk. About <laughs> you don't really know much. Yeah, yeah that's why it's a dog. dog. <laughs> I guess the the Secret Service dog had, had bit, bit somebody multiple, multiple. Biden's times. dog bit a bunch of Secret Service. Yeah, men. but they're not putting it down. So it's like, mm. I, and then when I said that, he looked at me like. Why, why would you? Yeah. So I was like, no, let's just move on to the next. I wanted them to talk about what they had to talk about because I was like, hey, f the subject y'all had me talk about. I don't even want to talk about that. Y'all just keep doing y'all. But, but oh, you think the dog should be killed? Uh, if it bit a brother, bunch yeah, of, yeah, 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 put down. I, I like how he tried to <laughs> that make it sound worse. Drewski hates <laughs> dogs and wants Yo, all of them to die. In the White House. Jesus. But how, many, how many people did the dog bite? It was a lot. Yeah, yeah, I think I said like twenty four. Anybody people. else's dog, they'd have put Dang. your dog down. But it was like secure, uh, secret service. Like, First they'd have put a muzzle on him, then they would have put yeah, that, yeah, that dog yeah, down. Yeah. Well, so if, it, if it was a black dog, a pit bull or something, gone. <laughs> yeah, it was out at the first bite. Damn. And yeah, not twenty. Twenty four is come on now. So you got a new show <laughs> could have been out. Oh, uh, it's it's a amazing show. It's based on um, I was influenced by P Diddy. And when he had the making the band show, I saw. Wait, thought, like wait that, yeah, no, I, that's bro. See, that's why I can't look this way when I'm talking. That's why I said P Diddy. That's a lot of P Diddy. He was like, he was like, he said, and he said, I was influenced by the he was like, yeah, because he stopped. Nah, nah, he did, he did making the band. You know, we was watching that earlier. You know, they, yeah, they. I love making. Y'all wasn't watching making the band. We was watching making the band. So yeah, it played a big part, and and I really wanted to do something based. <laughs> I hate this place. Oh, it man. was too much space between. I said, yeah, well, I, I, it was like he did. It was. It was. You got to get to that quick. I'm not about that. Yeah. And light of recent events, you got to get to that quick. I need to say by? making the band first. There you go. <laughs> I was influenced by making the band. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the show. There you go. And um, yeah, nah, it's, it's an amazing show. It's pretty much like a, a comedic version of that. Kind of like how Chappelle did when he did like a, a skit on making mm -hmm. the band back in the day. But um, yeah, they we had we had contestants staying there for seven days. They competed for fifty thousand um, dollars. And you come out yeah. of pocket to do that stuff, right? Yeah, 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 man. But you know. <laughs> 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 nah, we had companies help us. We had uh, Raisin Cane's put up the 50000 oh, for the God. contestants to win. Um, you serious? Yeah, 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 I swear. And we had like <laughs> Nike. Nike participated in putting in some money, okay. prize picks. 
uh, Icebox Jewelry Put in some money too as well Yeah Nice Shout out to Icebox yeah. Jewelry so, so why So I mean I, I see you putting it out on YouTube And some mm-hmm. people would ask why But I, if you're getting your own sponsors And you're making your own money yeah, Like yeah. why chase behind these mm-hmm. networks And these streaming services yeah. Is that no the thought point, process man. Yeah kind of Because it's like uh, they we we tried to pitch it to all these big networks anyway, and nobody believed in it. They were like, "Yo, what is mm, could have been really? records?" Yeah, it's a lot of you know them older executives that mm-hmm. don't really know. They're not really hip, and they just like we we heard this guy's funny, but we don't know what the hell could have been records is. You know, so mm-hmm. every time I tried to explain it, nobody understood what I was talking about. So I'm like, "Damn, we just we probably just gonna have to do this ourselves." We went to every meeting. I'm talking. I'm taking zooms. It's taking an hour. I'm explaining it for like an hour, breaking it down. We got a PowerPoint. I'm pointing that stuff. I'm making them laugh. So I'm like, oh, we we got this. Mm. Nobody believed it. They all like, nah, we'll pass. We'll pass. That's one of your most popular sketches. Yeah, Yeah, I know. That's We got proof of concept. I'm like, they're doing views. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get millions of views. But you know, they, uh, you know, they, you know. What happened with um, the show with you and Kevin Hart? Oh, man. They... It took that off, man. We uh we were supposed to do that. Um Writer's Strike. Writer's Strike. Writer's Strike. Oh wow. So during Writer's Strike they uh they took that down, man. They just they just got rid of it. I don't know I don't know what the real, real reason was. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, it was a show based on like like past high school, being like a high school senior and uh yeah, I, I came on there and talked about it with yeah. y'all. But yeah, they they I really don't know the full the full reason, but they, they took that off, man. I don't know. Damn. Yeah, it low key pissed me off a little bit, but yeah, that's what it is. Just because you know, I, I don't, I really don't know the full writer strike reason. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, and I feel like nobody fully knew exactly what was going on with writer strike and all that. So I think, uh, yeah, they might have used that as an excuse. I really don't know, but yeah, yeah, we 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 had everything rolling, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I think about you with sketch, right? And I think mm-hmm. about you know, because I, I was born in 1978, so I've seen <laughs> a lot of great sketch shows. And Living Color, yeah. Chappelle Show. Get gas when we start talking about times like that. <laughs> 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 <He's an old laughs> actor, right? But I think about it because you are very good at it, right? Yeah. Do you think you need a TV show to validate you to where people start talking about you in that way? Like they talked about the Key and the Pills, the Chappelle's, then Living Colors. Um, not not really. I think because social media is so powerful now, bro. Like it, w- without social media. And um, I'm sure she know this too as well. Mm-hmm. Like, social media is might be bigger than TV now. Yeah. Like, it, it used to be the goal. Like, oh, we gonna get the TV. We gonna do this yeah. big thing. But it's like when you really think about it, mo- majority of the stars right now are like the social media mm-hmm. people. We even got Twitch streamers who are making bigger bags than rappers. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, and Aiden Ross, these these dudes are really making a lot of money. They're paying the rappers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like real show fees to come onto their stream, so it's like I don't know. This is it's different days, but I think that that's what made me think I don't really need anything to justify anything because it's like, damn, we doing it now. Like I, I will pull up to a city and say we're doing could have been records tomorrow, and thousands of people are out there just right. lined up right. trying to mm-hmm. audition. So mm-hmm. it's like that's really the goal for. Did, did the celebrities get it at first? I know they get it now, but did they get it at first? Because early on, Birdman was one of the, one of the ones that you did. Did he get it at first, or did you have to explain to Birdman? Um, it, well, it wasn't too much explained to Birdman. Let's uh, let's just put that out there, bro. <laughs> it's not really any 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 conversation. Sound nervous? Man. Yeah, it's, you know. It's, I saw you with your security too. I was like, damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got travel with security now, brother. You know. Yeah. Hey, there's, there's reasons for everything, right? You don't see the change, so hey, stop asking. Is the beef real? Hey, I think it's not, but you gotta watch the show, man. It's, it's it everything, house? yeah. And could have been house on episode like four or five. Mm-hmm. You gonna you gonna see the whole of how it happened, of what what went down, and you know the whole altercation itself. So who you more scared of? Mm. He said, "Who am I more scared of? Birdman or, or King? <laughs> what? A uh, who? King <laughs> Ti son? Oh, come on, man." That- King Harris. Ooh, you standing on Ben. What we talking about, man? Come on, man. Right. Don't play with people, kids. Yeah. Nah, he don't play about, with Hey, King. come on, man. King said he, he talking about King the term King, King, on son? Yes, King. Man, he said he pulling up on you. Nah, he did pull up on me at the video shoot. He had too much security out there, though. He did. Nah, he did pull up on me. Yeah, yeah, he did. To the standing on business. Yeah, he tried to do like a like a. Oh my god. He tried to do a stare off. Got out his car and just stood on kind of like the top of the car like that and just. I said, man, our name was business. All right, and and this is going right back to that. A nice ass house. <laughs> he he don't know about standing on no business, man. <laughs> and y'all know that. Y'all stop playing, man. Yeah, I'm lying. Like I ain't from the suburbs too. Yeah, I'm from the same way. I think I think King will make it hard for you <laughs> in Atlanta. Nah, nah, nah. I, I f- with King Harris though. He cool. He cool. Yeah.
No, you call that man. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. I'm going to change your lap. We're from the same way. I'm going to clean this up. Let me clean this up. Let me clean this up. All right, we got more with Drewski. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Drewski. Charlemagne? Did you really win a million dollars betting on the Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Amazing. Really? Yeah, with prize picks, man. And it was just so How random. How to put up? A uh, hundred thousand. And they gave you the million? Mm. Yeah, that, like, I really got an account. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he wired it. How long did it take? Like two days. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I looked out for family and friends, though. Like, I I, I threw about, like, like 300,000 worth. You got to pay taxes on that money, too, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, I said 300,000. I ain't say 500. <laughs> so you got one nothing? No, 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 no. I got, I got, I got a little something. A couple hundred? Yeah, come on, Don. You know, you know, but, but look, I, I already wanted to bless family and friends anyway. beforehand. Yeah, I had this list in my mind during my come up that I'm like, all right, because I used to always like stay at my homie's house during the come up, or like you know, they family would let come in there and like shoot skits and mm-hmm. wild out in the house, throw parties, do whatever. Like you know, how, you know how it is. So I, I already had this list in my in, in the back of my head. Like, all right, People, I want to look out for them one day. But it's it's hard when it's your real money. I'm like, hell, no, I ain't trying to just do that just cause. So. How much you give them though? Like you give everybody the same amount? Or? Yeah, no, nah, I gave I gave a good amount away. It was, it, was, it was split up good. Everybody got what they owed, man. I ain't give too much to nobody. I ain't give too too less to the other person. So it's, it's never gonna be enough, though. Yeah, it's never gonna yeah, be enough. You know how that shit go. The more the more successful you get, it's I heard. Like, Drewski I heard. Ain't doing this. Drewski ain't yeah, doing that. Yeah. You know. I just hope they're thankful for it because you know it came from a good place. True. Yeah. And now, the trailer of the uh, could have been house you had stars in there. You got um, Chris Brown, yeah. one of my favorite people. I knew he was gonna leave with Chris. Uh, uh-huh. Yes, Chris. <laughs> um, Snoop Dogg, Nav Green. Why you wait? Wait, wait. Why you say that? <laughs> yeah, she loves Chris. Chris. Oh, okay, okay. She loves, okay. Chris. yeah, she loves Chris. Chris's. I love okay, okay. Chris Brown, and I love my boyfriend Chris. But yeah, Chris. Okay, yeah. Chris Brown is. I'm a major fan. Okay. But um, how did you get them to be down with the uh, all the chaos? I know the show was chaotic. Yeah, yeah. It, it was crazy as hell, man. Yeah. I think. Um, Honestly, yeah, nah. Chris Brown, he's 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 a good friend of mine, but he mm. he wanted to come in and participate somehow, some way. So we had Snoop yeah. Dogg come in and do like a whole bunch of like judging and stuff. But Chris Brown came in and did like a dance competition. Yeah, where we like is I don't want to give too much of it away, but yeah. he's he, he, that f-ing dance is asshole. He don't stop. Mm-hmm. That was dancing behind the scenes. I'm like, hey man, wait till they start recording this. <laughs> Sit down somewhere. Nah, he he he's a he's a good dude, but nah, he he's addicted to dancing, and he, yeah. and he honestly does not stop dancing. Yeah. But yeah, nah, we had him doing that. We had uh, Troy Taylor on there. He's like a vocal coach. Who else we had on there? Crip Mac. You know who Crip Mac is? Yeah, I seen Crip Mac. He be on uh, No Jumper a lot. Right? He is in jail. He's in jail? Yeah. He used to be on No Jumper, though, right? Well, yeah, he used to be on yeah. No Jumper. Yeah, but he, um, yeah, nah. <laughs> what is he like, you know, you know yeah, that brother is in jail right, jail right now, right now man. Man. For what? Nah, uh, and how long? I really don't know. That He'd be in and out. That's why we had him come and talk to contestants, because it was like jail one-on-one, what you got to cook in there. What it's like, and then he what? he ran some fades with some. <laughs> in the house, in the yeah, house he ran or? fades with the house. You mean yeah. beef with him and just start yeah, fighting, yeah. or just teaching him how to fight? No, 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 no. He's like, he's like, yo, if you if if you gonna go to jail, you gotta run some fades. So this <laughs> lined everybody up in the house mm. and ran. Just ran I, we thought it was gonna be like a slap box, you know? Everybody like, ah, the crib man crazy. This <laughs> just started knocking <laughs> his house. <laughs> I said, okay, man. We we had to shut the whole. You have yeah. insurance? Yeah, yeah, we got all that. <laughs> everybody good. Everybody good. Ain't no concussions or nothing. Ain't no concussions. Nobody got hurt for real. <laughs> what the hell? It could have been. <laughs> Ain't no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you no. know, yeah, no. We we put a stop to it after like the second one. Damn. Nah, we we put a stop to it though. Like I, we knew we knew the you know. After but y'all see person. it on the show. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. You see how uh, I feel like they're trying to start beef between like the people who do like the sketches and stuff. Man, I online. hate that. Man, they 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 yeah. love compare and contrast. Mm-hmm. And with everybody, who who you seen recently? They doing the. Oh, uh, I saw the meme where they compared. They said, "Who's funny?" You told me I'm lying. Yeah. Just yeah, told yeah, me about yeah, this last yeah, night. Yeah. Go ahead, talking about yeah. uh, you and Desi Banks. Psh, you know they stay doing that. Mm-hmm. They, it is, bro. There's so many. I don't. I don't know why they try to put. And it makes like almost like a real. It almost feel like a real beef when you yeah. see the person because you really in in general you know I, I f- with him like that's yeah. that's my guy we did like a show early on where he brought me on to when I was still like young on the come up and like Ooh. I think Desi Desi okay yeah we was in um something in Atlanta we we did a show together and uh, yeah it, it, like I said it makes it weird a little bit because when you see the social media and like Twitter and all these people mm-hmm. saying all these comments it makes you feel like it damn near is beef in real life because it's like damn yeah. 
kind of don't like this, <laughs> man. But you, but you don't really feel that way. Right, right, right. But it's like you're right. so you're seeing all these comments. You see, but it, but yeah, it gets in your brain because yeah, I'm a competitive person. I'm so competitive that yeah. If I see something like that, it's like, nah, nah, nah. I gotta win that. Right. And it's I, not even I got, personal. I, yeah, I got, yeah, it's not even personal. Yeah. It's not even personal. It just becomes this thing. And I'm sure he could probably agree the same way. Mm -hmm. But they do it with even like Country Wayne. They do it with uh, DC Young Fly. They do it with everybody, man. Yeah. And all of y'all do different things. But also, people yeah, don't realize yeah. when y'all being funny or being just sarcastic. Because I, I dad yeah. left a comment and he was like, um, stop comparing me to dude. Yeah. Hey man, now, if you don't, yeah. I, hey, I don't know. Hey, you don't know if that was real. I don't man? know. Hey, no, hey. So uh, but I, I, I don't feel that way. I think it's just. I hate that it makes you start to feel like it mm -hmm. is because of how they try to. But yeah, we got to do better, man. So why not call a person? I'd be like, man, listen, man, just just in case we ain't got no issues. Because it ain't even got to be on. Yeah, yeah. it ain't because it's like, bro, let's just keep let's keep grinding, man. It ain't yeah. about that. Because I don't even want to. Because when you make that call, it's almost acknowledging like, hey, nah, this yeah. Is, yeah, they yeah. they doing their job, man. They, I ain't, you know, making me not like. Nah, it's still yeah. Boring, you know, but I think, um, yeah, no, nah, I, don't, I don't feel that way. I just, <laughs> you never know how the other side feel. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you, what about uh, people that are also they accuse you of stealing their skit ideas? Mm. I saw the uh, guy yeah, named that was that was more recent. Yeah, yeah. nah, I think I don't know, man. I, I honestly, I, I've been so original since I started like doing skits in general. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I, I never felt mm -hmm. like I had to steal from anybody. If anything, I felt like people stole from me. But mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. I don't I don't address it. I, I think um, I did see the whole thing with that dude and what's how, what he say though. Some uh, of the work wise. The people, yeah, the work wise. People, yeah. the one you just posted. You just posted that yeah, yeah, yeah. this week. Yeah, this I think past it was this week. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work, having a work relationship. And it blew up so crazy. That was probably, mm -hmm. bro, I got like 70 million views because on Twitter. Because it's relatable. Yeah, it's like and 20 it's million on Instagram. Yeah. Like, I think because it's true. I think I let me A couple people. million yeah. TikTok. Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, <laughs> yeah, we all, we all, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a truth teller, brother. Like, I, I, I that's, I, I, I do skits on things that I went through. Mm -hmm things i've seen in real life yeah. it's nothing i'm not faking anything so there's uh, of course if we're black we have all seen almost similar mm -hmm. things it's kind of like when cat williams was calling out some of the dudes for stealing his jokes on stage it's like yo we are all kind of from the same we've seen the same struggle we've seen the same type of so it's like it's kind of hard not to say that maybe sometimes we are stealing but yeah no nah, i i never had to do that to mm -hmm. especially with me being you know so original with my I, I never had to steal nobody. That's not steal. You consider yeah. that stealing justice because you got nah. You got but the I, 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 but the thing mm -hmm. is, I never even saw the dude until yeah. they had. I started seeing people tag it, tag it, tag it. So I'm like, damn, who is this? So I went mm -hmm. to the yeah. page and I saw that he does those type of skits all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh brother, that's oh you I just husband. came in and did one. I ain't. Oh, I get what you. I'm not that. trying to take your flow here, but right. he, yeah, he had, he had written down. He's like, y'all seen buddy stole my. Shit. And I'm like, bro, come on, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. But see, I never address it like that. I just read it and be like, I just laugh because it's no, moving. yeah, keep it pushing, man. There's no the point day. in entertaining all that. Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm saying when you yeah. got an idea, like yeah. the work husband, work wife idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just a, but who idea. did it better, brother? Let's talk about that. Who did it? See, this better? is where the peeps start. <laughs> nah, the most viral. You said you already said. You already on the low. He said that low. You know, to each his own. Was fire. I ain't see it. Just on. Yeah. How you ain't? And that's your guy. You see how peeps start? You see? Crazy. No, I really didn't see it. I don't know. Stupid man. I saw yours. I definitely saw yours. Yeah. Nah. It's it's uh. Yeah. Right, but it worked for Malik because honestly, no yeah, that's his whole that's his whole flow, and I respect that he does that. It's cool, but I, I never heard of Malik until this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. That's so what I said, you know, and and he he swear they like, bro, he's seen that. So I started seeing people. He posted another skit recently. They like, oh, Drew's gonna steal this one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That, like, it's not something I just do. They, they, they just assume that I'm watching. This shit. Nah, I, I think uh, what he's doing is great. Hey, I, I applaud him. That, that's his flow. <laughs> Keep doing it, brother. All right, well, we still kicking it with Drewski. Don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Drewski, Charlemagne. You know, I want to ask you about could have been records. Like, you talk a lot about the 360 deals and the bad contracts. Do you actually yeah. talk to artists about that? Is that what you Yeah, hell yeah. We, we, I okay. like to tell people straight up, we're going to you over. Mm. That's why I said I was inspired by P. Diddy. When, that's what I was talking about. Why the f do y'all keep looking at me like that? When I say that, I'm saying that I'm inspired by the way he was talking to his people. Late. Low. Well, I ain't say that. <laughs> yeah, no, I ain't say, I ain't say that. I like the way that he was talking to the people at his label on the show, you know, like, yeah, so I, I, that's the oh, same man. way we do our business. Yeah. Yeah. We He's tell you straight, straight up. up. Yeah, straight we, up if you it, yeah. know you getting over from jump, 
Mm-hmm. What the problem is? You can't, yeah. You knew the contract when you got in here. That's true. You knew mm-hmm. what it was. By the way, that's true even if you don't tell them that. Because they can read. Right. Yeah. Right. Go get you a lawyer, read yeah. the contract. Nah, 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 nah. They, they can't all read, though. Don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they can't all read. Yo. Yeah, somebody that was dyslexic that was recently on the show. You know that <laughs> okay. okay, his brother can't read either. He, he, I do, I know, I'm listening. He lost his I'm waiting on you. Nah, nah, bro. He like to get you to just keep talking and just right, run down right, that rabbit right. hole of saying stupid <laughs> He like, keep doing it. Go ahead. <laughs> Talk yourself to that hole. So just get into Just get into dog. Hey, I smarted the last day. Hey, hell, I did it. Right. See, I, I got I to gotta come back and correct myself. I feel <laughs> yeah. like we need to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this. Wait for Drew to finish his whole answer. I, listen, I thought you came here just had beef with everybody. Nah, 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 nah. Y'all bringing up all the beef, man. Dogs, oh, dyslexic, hey, Diddy, Desi. De- wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> nah, y'all, hey, come on, man. I don't got no beef with, problem with nobody, man. Is it tough for people to take you serious in meetings? You <laughs> Obviously. Too much. You see, you see. Like, I'm trying to be serious, man. I'm trying to get my point across. Uh, like, <laughs> nah, um, yeah, since I was a kid, man, I always, yeah. But I think. Uh, what do you mean, even when a kid, when you was a kid, they didn't take you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, teachers, uh, students, all that, man. Like, we always used to. I used to f around so much that everybody mm-hmm. thought everything I said was a joke. You know, so it, it, it's normal. But the people close to me, they know. We, we, Why are you we laughing, have, man? That man talking. Yeah, man. <laughs> no. I, when, I, when, when, I'm, a brother's trying to tell his truth right now, That's man. Right. I'm you laughing at that man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, now, damn. Do you remember a time where, like, you was, like, dead serious? Like, man, I'm, like, you was sick or something, and you didn't believe you, and they didn't believe you? Yeah, nah, I, I had to go to the hospital when I I, cra- I, got, I crashed on a, um, on a four-wheeler, like, four or five years ago mm-hmm. and well really like three four years ago and I, I went to the hospital and everybody was in there trying to take selfies take videos and joke around and shit, but I really was like hurt for real mm-hmm. but it was like a whole joke that I was in there like what, what, what the hell you doing in here I'm like tell me <laughs> oh for real yeah yeah you know what I'm saying they like everybody like yeah it's like yo I need help right now you know what I'm saying but that's the problem boy what your ass doing in here get your ass sit up get up I'm like my back my back you know what I'm saying? But that, that's the oh, thing about comedians. Man. You can never be yeah. serious or like really be going through some real yeah. shit. Well, no, that's because of you. Cause you yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Even, even, even DC. DC mm-hmm. recently, I think somebody <laughs> stole his bag or something. Yeah. yeah. And niggas and in the comments roasting. They said, yeah. lame man, lost your bag at the club. Ad. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Bro, he has some valuable <laughs> things in there, man. No, I can't. Can y'all really show some remorse for this dude? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, people oh, don't give a shit. When you, when you funny, people don't give a shit. Oh, Man. Just kiss, yo. You do be having like you. Be, yeah, I be like, having real, real, real circumstances. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, so I think people be thinking that yes, I be coming into stadiums, <laughs> arenas, courthouses. Yeah, no matter where we are. T- TSA. So I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so why would I believe you? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I get it. So yeah, I had a I had a guy text me. When was NBA All Star Weekend? Last weekend? Yeah. yeah. He's flirting with you? Man, shut up. Guy texted me last weekend. And he <laughs> was yeah, a guy text you. He was like, he was like, well, it was in a group chat, and he was like, man, most popular person that. Some NBA All Star party yeah. was Drewski, hands mm-hmm. down. I'm like, hey, I'm mean, doing his thing. Yeah, man. No, nah, I'm just, I'm blessed. I'm thankful, man. Did I'm, you feel that in the party that he was talking about? I don't know which uh, one he was talking about. A little bit, a little bit, yeah, because my dumb ass was standing on the couch uh, and, and, and nobody else was standing. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't Michael Rubin. Yeah, I don't think it was Mike Rubin. Yeah, it was, uh, he talking about an All Star, not NBA Super Bowl. NBA All Star, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, I think it was um, Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss was there. Yeah, it was a couple, it was a couple different that was out there. Jada Kiss had a party? Yeah, I, I think Jada Kiss had a party. It was it was one of them old heads, man. They had, they had a party. Jesus <laughs> Christ! No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, I, it was it was one of those brothers. I don't know. Yeah. Well, let's 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 get into your record. Let's introduce your record. Yeah. Oh, yeah. one thing. You and Jack Harlow got a movie, right? Are y'all still working on that? No, we're not working on that. Movie. God damn! <laughs> <laughs> another another writer strike. Damn. Damn. Another writer hey, strike. Yeah, you know, we, we had a, we had a whole bunch of <laughs> a lot of missed opportunities. But see, it don't be about the missed opportunities, man. It's mm-hmm. about continuing. To try, you got to keep doing this over and over, figuring it out. Yeah. It don't matter about the no's; they only gonna know about the yeses unless y'all bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody really. Watching. You and Jack got a good relationship, though. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, man. That's my boy. Yo, my um, boy. how you feel about this record talking about whips and chains? chains? Man, bro, he's going crazy. I mean, there's a white guy talking about whips and chains in America. People love that. Yeah, but I think he's talking about like locking them down. Like, yeah, know, that's whoa, what slavery whoa, was all about. Whoa, whoa, locking them down. No, man, you know what I'm saying? Like locking them down. Like so nobody you're, you're can okay lock them down. You're okay with slavery, is what you said? No, <laughs> man. As long as it's just yeah, yeah, keep trying to set me up, bro. Nah, nah, nah. It's a, it's a good song. I think I think he. Uh, no, it is bop. It is yeah, bop. yeah, yeah. It's a bop, man. It's a bop, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Moving on, because I don't want to have to correct myself on that. <laughs> Hey, Lucy Jack. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's about my music. About to go number one. Play my uh, standing on business. Me, standing me, on me business. and Snoop Dogg. Right. Yeah. Standing on business. Juice DJ Drama on there too. Shout the drama. Yeah. We appreciate you for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Follow Juice if you're not already. But who is it? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yes. Man. You know? Thank y'all. And always a pleasure to see you, brother. Yes. Love Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. All right. Y'all. It's the Breakfast too. Club. It's Drewski. Come on. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. Execution on the donkey of the day is something to behold. Is it a read? He gave me donkey of the day and I deserve it. People need to know. Well, need... you need to tell them. I you? am. you have the voice. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. It's time for donkey of the day. <laughs> it's a read, but you're so good at it. You're trying to be a fake-ass Charlemagne. The only one Charlemagne to go. Damn, Charlemagne. Who you give a donkey of the day to now? Well, Sexy Red, donkey of the day. Uh, go to two Ohio women, Lorene. Oh, excuse me. Lorene B. Forello, she's 55. And Karen Cashbaum, she's 63. Now, I didn't go looking for two women to give Donkey of the Day to this morning, but God clearly wanted me to deliver this message today. I know, I know, Charlemagne, how dare you give two women the biggest hee haw on International Women's Day? Well, I have no reason to explain. Instead, I'll let you hear it yourself and you decide. Let's go to Fox 8 Ohio for the report, please. Ashtabula City officials say they are stunned after arresting two women. Lorene Farillo and Karen Cashbaum, who are accused of taking a deceased 80-year-old man through a bank drive through to withdraw money from his account. They both have been charged with uh, felonies. Ashtabula City Police Chief Robert Stell tells us the women are facing charges of theft and gross abuse of a corpse. They're charged with gross abuse of a corpse for taking a person who was dead and acting in a manner that would shock the conscience. Police say the women lived with the elderly man, Douglas mm. Lehman, and they found him dead inside the home Monday. Mm. But instead of calling police or an ambulance, officials say the two had other plans. Yeah, the allegation is that uh, he was propped up in the front seat of the car and uh, <laughs> taken through the drive through so that the bank would see him in the vehicle and they'd be able to make the withdrawal. After receiving about $900, the women are accused of taking his body to the hospital and then leaving. Oh, my God, no. First things first, rest in peace, Douglas Lehman. Okay, dropping the clues bombs for Douglas Lehman. All right, these two women rode around with a man's corpse, propped him up in the car, and withdrew money from his bank account. Now, here's the thing. Both these women were not related to this man, yet they both lived with him. That man was 80 years old. Laureen, you 25 years younger than him. Karen, Karen, you 17 years younger than him. That means combined, y'all are 42 years younger than that man. If y'all two relatively young ladies to him had been sucking and sexing this man the way y'all were supposed to, you wouldn't have had to prop up his body to go withdraw money because, because y'all would have had access to his accounts already. Okay, if you was feeding and fornicating with this 80 year old properly, you would have owned everything he owned. 80 years old, all he needs is fruits and vegetables, some starches, beans, fish, some proteins, easy work. If not, you know, if y'all were doing that, y'all would have been in this man's will already. Okay, clearly these women never listened to One City Girls album ever in their life. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all supposed to be tag teaming that old man. You should have been giving him the best last days of his life. He 80. He not even getting erections like that anymore. All he really wants is company. Now, erectile dysfunction is not an inevitable part of aging, especially if you have a healthy lifestyle, okay? You know, if you let a healthy lifestyle that helps you to prevent diabetes and hypertension and heart disease and other diseases, but it's still a little bit more difficult for older men to get aroused during sexual stimulation than younger men, so you didn't even have a lot of work to do. 80 years old, he just wanted some company. Now, the reason they did this, you heard, you know, wasn't as cruel as one may think because the bank previously allowed the women to withdraw money from Doug's account as long as he was with them. So when they went to get the $900 out, the teller gave it to them because they didn't know Doug was dead. They saw Doug just propped up in the front seat, so they gave him the money. Now, listen, uh, Jess Hilarious, rega right. regardless of what the internet says, you are a woman, a mother already. Don't play with me. I mean, uh, okay. Like, why you started like <laughs> that? Another right? on the way. You are all woman. I don't care defend, what the internet say. <laughs> defend these two women and what they did. I will never. What the hell do I look like? Stop playing. I don't want to say something else, but okay. we on the radio and oh, we gonna get fined. So say the first letter. Of it. Don't f and play with me. Okay, ever. okay. I will never defend this. Clearly, they didn't see Babs mm. because Nisi and Mickey mm -hmm. didn't have to do no sexual acts. Didn't have to suck him or do none of that crap to Mr. Manley. And they both was in the um, they both was in the wheel at the end when he died. So yeah, they point. just had to take care of him. Apparently, they probably wasn't even taking care of him right. Because if you're getting taken care of right, then you'd be put in the wheel, too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, but no, you was making it real sexual. And they ain't had to do it that. It ain't even had to be sexual. Yeah, because I'm not ever trying to suck on no 80-year-old yin-yang. 
You never. You gonna get married you one day? You said that you said your husband gonna be eighty. Yeah, when I'm eighty, all right, cool. Okay. But yeah, 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 yeah. they young. Don't nobody want to do that. Yeah. I don't care how much money is on the line. Yeah. No, I'm not doing it. So there's no justification for what these two women did. I don't did. know, Envy. <laughs> a millionaire. Oh, Envy, you, you <laughs> want eighty old penis for a minute? He asked me the question. Oh, oh okay. I thought he Why said you want me to be gay so, so bad? So listen, you Lord. um. There's no justification for these two women. No, there's no justification. Okay. What? Propping a man up? <laughs> gotcha. Like, like, what is this? Weekend at Bernie's? Like, what? Yeah, is yeah, that yeah, what yeah. it was? Yeah. You, you propped him up? Yes. Are you dumb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. absolutely not. I'm okay. not. I'm not. All right. That's why Jess Hilarious is a woman you can trust. Please give Lauren for Laureen for Raylo and Karen Cashbaum the biggest hee haw. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then they're just going to drop them off at the. The hospital and just leave uh, him? Just, just makes a good point. I'm, I, that's why I said earlier, all this man really wanted was company. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If they were just treating him good, they would have been in the will. By the that's way, they might be in the will and don't know it, dummies. Yeah. <laughs> it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Becky Lynch. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Becky, I'm not going to lie. For some reason, I thought you were going to be a lot bigger. Oh, On TV, right. you look like you, you like you super muscular. Like, I thought you could lift up every man in the room and throw us out the roof. Right. I've been Who bulking? said she can't? I've been bulking. You've you been know? bulking? Dynamite comes in small packages. Mm. <laughs> you ever hear Ply <laughs> song? Ply <laughs> song, Becky? You give me that Becky. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yes, I've definitely heard that. You know what it's about? Yeah, I know what it's about. What's it about? What's it about? You know what it's about? What's it about? <laughs> but, you know, it's getting down. Okay. I'm okay. Just I'm 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 it's like it's a morning down. show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's actually about somebody going down, but same difference. Yeah, 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 same it's about difference. Getting down. <laughs> but Becky is here to promote her new book, uh, Becky Lynch. It's an autobiography. Becky Lynch, the man, mm -hmm. not your average, average girl. What made mm. you decide to write a memoir? No. So I always wanted to write a book. My dad was always on me for. Uh, for, for writing everything down and when I became a big wrestling fan my my, my dude was uh, Mick Foley oh yeah, yes. I, you remember Hell Mick yeah, I loved legend. Mick and and he's the person who really got me into wrestling so he had written a book he had written it himself and it, have you ever read it was such a I great never read it, but I saw his documentary though such a great mm -hmm. book such a great documentary mm -hmm. too I used to watch that on repeat when I was um, and so and so it was always kind of in the front of my head that one day I wanted to write a document or write a biography and uh and so then then the deal fell on my lap and i got to work and here we are mm. why the title the man not your average girl because yeah. i'm the man i know that's right <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so uh around 2018 i adopted the moniker the man because in our business in most businesses right the, t the top dog the person who is of outstanding ability has historically been referred to as the man mm. and so this was me claiming that I am the, the man, man now okay. yeah, she bringing all to these rules <laughs> yeah, I'm up. the man Lynch everything I know that's right she said listen now I'm got, breaking the rules you got into a, a, a huge head injury that, that kept you away from wrestling for a while so what made you want to go back after all that the trials the tribulations the stress and all that gosh so when I left it I kept trying to find things that I wanted to do like I became a personal trainer and I was like yeah, I'm not really into that and then my mom was a flight attendant, and so she asked if I wanted to be a flight attendant, so then I became a flight attendant, I wasn't into that. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then I would do different things, like I ran a Pilates studio, mm -hmm. and I did a teaching English as a foreign language course, and like just all of these random mm -hmm. things that I thought maybe, maybe this will be my passion, mm -hmm. you know? And then I started an acting, um, an acting course, and I loved that. And then I went to, to acting college, and I liked that. And then, and then from that, then I ended up, doing the stunt work which then led me back to WWE but in that entire time frame like I kept feeling like there was something that I was meant to do in wrestling mm -hmm. that I had this passion and this uh just a spark for it and I don't even know what that spark was because I wasn't I wasn't necessarily the greatest but I I maybe thought about it differently mm -hmm. and I I just had a love for it and I felt tremendous guilt for leaving it and mm. and for for feeling like it had given me so much and I had left it. And then when I got the opportunity, it was like, oh, yes, this is this, this is what I'm meant to do. Right. As, as yeah. a woman who introduced you to wrestling, hmm? who introduced you to wrestling? Now? My brother. Your brother? Okay, yeah, okay, my okay. brother. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was... Um, so I, rem I always remember being in the house, you know? I remember, 
like watching it when we were kids but then then falling out of it and then when the attitude era happened and Mick and Stone Cold and mm-hmm. The Rock mm-hmm. and everybody was Classic so time. hot. It was mm-hmm. so great. Mm-hmm. And and but still I was stuck in that oh wrestling's fake kind of thing. Like I was the worst. And uh and then when I would see Mick Foley on TV, I was like, Oh, this this guy's mm-hmm. really captivating. So then I would come back and I would watch and then I saw Lita for the first time. She was so cool mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah, and then I was hooked. Have the rock been good for business coming back? Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been great. Yeah. Anytime the rock's involved in anything. I love to see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's been awesome. And he's he's always been so great to me and um encouraging in my career and to have him back and That's dope. watch him do his thing. It's been amazing. How often do you practice? Gosh, practice? Well, we're on the road fifty two weeks a year. So we're in the ring, we're doing live events. So we might have T V we have t- two T V shows a week. We've got Ron, we've got SmackDown. But but in the interim, we have live events, shows that only happen for the house, like like a live theater, if you will. Um, and they happen on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm on the road every week doing those live events. And and that's more practice than, say, practice, you know. Right. So we work out every day. And then, and then when we go, you learn more from being in front of a crowd than you ever would mm-hmm. just wrestling around in the gym. And, have you ever been starstruck like you're a match and you're, and you're wrestling somebody that maybe you were a fan of and you ever get stuck sometimes like wow I'm here mm-hmm. no I don't think so no no I don't think that's ever happened no mm-hmm. no well actually you know because I've done promos with with Rock and, and John Cena and that's been very cool like mm-hmm. th- like there's been a moment of oh my gosh what am I doing you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but never while you're in the fight though no 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 okay. no because he because then you have to just carry on with business and then yeah. you got to be the man, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you have a baby. I do. Yes. I do. How How was that? How was motherhood oh, and best. being a, a pro wrestler? How's that? It's the best. It it's is? a It's a balancing act. Yeah. It's a balancing act. And and one that, you, you know, I, don't, I don't think you ever really figure out, you know? You just do yeah. your best and you get on with it. But uh, she's incredible and she comes everywhere with us. Does she? And, how yeah, old is she? She's three. Well, she has oh. to though, because Seth is a wrestler too. So yeah, yeah. Said, you're always on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's cool being able to do that and bring her everywhere with us. And uh, and we're lucky; we're in a good position. We have a bus, and our bus driver is amazing. And then his wife is our nanny, so she looks after uh. our baby while while we're working and while we're in the uh. building. And it's like she has an extra set of auntie and uncle, you know. And That's so cool. it's it's a big family adventure. And then we're always, you know, we're in the ring every night but during the day we're looking for zoos and mm-hmm. for kids museums yeah. and uh, one day all that you kind do of it stuff with like you're losing and then all of a sudden your daughter pops out of nowhere and helps mommy <laughs> you just gotta do that one oh, that I seen good. a video the other day it was real wrestling a little sister came in and helped her brother oh, but you gotta crazy. do that one time like when you're losing yeah. and then here comes the, the three year old with a toy or something <laughs> hits the rock over the head and you win or whatever oh. maybe I don't know that would be a, very, be a great TV moment <laughs> yeah, oh right? that's incredible you know, rock rock bottoms the baby then what <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> Jesus. When he rock bottoms a little three year old, then what? Oh, <laughs> then he'd really be a heel. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, we got more with Becky Lynch when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with WWE star Becky Lynch. The man. And you, the book is not your average, average girl. How do you define average? Gosh, I don't know. What is average, I suppose? I think that's that's the other question. I never think that there's an, a normal like what it what is normal, but I think average is is the baseline, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's the 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 standard. What is it? The standard girl is mm-hmm. five. Uh, oh is no, five, five, five four, five four or something. Like, yeah, because yeah, the average sorry. guy is what five seven. Is it? F- I think so. Yeah. So something like that. Yeah. So, so you know, it's 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 metrics that you can measure. You mm-hmm. know, what's the average weight? You know, so. I think I was I was always in that in that average average line like average weight average height average intellect probably average grades you know but I've been able to carve out this this quite on average life for myself and and yes. and I suppose that's the message of the book is uh I, spe- I suppose especially in a world where it's superstar right like we call them superstars yeah. and so you expect people to be superstars mm-hmm. and, and look phenomenal in a certain way and be a certain way i wanted to to show that you can you don't have to have all that you just have to have a dream and work for it you know mm-hmm. when you realize you weren't average 
I don't know. I think I've I've felt like I had this 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 gift for wrestling, mm-hmm. and it's not even a physical gift. It's a it's a mental gift. Mm-hmm. It's the way that I think about it, and this this spark and this passion. And I suppose that might not be average, but in terms of everything else, I think I'm just living this human experience that we all are. Right. That I'm trying to document and uh, communicate. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also helped with with wrestling. Is that I feel much like everybody feels, right? Mm-hmm. Like you you have your your doubts about yourself, you have your insecurities, and you're you're constantly fighting to to overcome them. And so sometimes then my opponents become those things that I'm trying to overcome. And and a lot of the time the story is is me versus me, you know. And I think that's the bigger opponent. What I want to ask about, uh, you talked about women getting this, you know, the same salary as their, their male counterparts. How difficult was it for you, you know, because um, I know it must have been a fight to to show that, look, I'm just as, as talented. I'm People come to see me just as much. How difficult was it for you to make sure that you got what you would deserve as far as financial? So that, I mean, the last contract I signed was, was three years ago. Mm-hmm. And I was coming back after having my kid. But I, when I left, I left on top. You know, it's one of those things where sometimes in in a male dominated sport, we we're historically like, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I don't want to make any way, but it was one of those things where I was like, no, I I de- I deserve this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no reason that I should should not be getting paid the same as as a top guy or mm. or anybody. But because of my gender, no, I've been able to, you you can put me in any main event mm-hmm. you can put me in any main event and it makes sense i've proved that time and time again so mm-hmm. compensate me fairly please absolutely <laughs> you know, I get it. You know? I get it. but it is i think it is that thing of like of having to ask for more and i think we're like oh i'm so grateful that you're paying me more than we used to be paid but still i need more no, <laughs> you yeah, know so not. you're always kind of pushing pushing that barrier and it's come a long way and i love to see it yeah and i would say just as a voice for women don't stop doing that that's really that's that's good that you're doing that um you just recently gained your citizenship how does it feel I, to be an american citizen it feels great you can tell it the feels truth great you can tell yeah. the truth no no no, oh, <laughs> oh, no, okay. no, no, no. that's the truth but, okay. but so so look no no i so i always wanted i came to new york when i was six years old mm. and i was i was in love with the place mm-hmm. i love i loved it i loved it and you know i watched american tv I, that's what I grew up on American movies I always wanted to come over here and I felt like if I could come over here then I could be whoever I wanted to be it didn't have to be this average girl (laughs) you know I could do more I could do more with my life and I've been able to live my dream and I've been able to have my amazing family and, and live beyond my dreams because I have an incredible hot husband who I definitely wouldn't have gotten in Ireland, and uh, <laughs> man, you just shit it on every no, man no, in no, no, no. I didn't Ireland mean that. Man. Very, very, Rebecca very Quinn handsome you're men. Ugly. No, very, very, very handsome men. Very uh, handsome men over there. They're lovely lads. Lovely lads. You know, but they, but they, they, they didn't have him. You know, you know, right. this fine, handsome Armenian lad. And because of that, then I wouldn't have had my daughter. Yeah. And and so I am so proud to be Irish. I am so proud of. Um, my heritage and uh, and everything that comes along with with being Irish, you know, the banter and 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 the storytelling. But America has afforded me this amazing life yeah. and my amazing family, and to be able to marry those two has been great. I love it. You know? are, you, are you scared of Rhea Ripley? No, Jesus, she was talking a lot of smack. I'm not scared of anybody. Mm. Don't look at me like that. I'm, I'm scared. You, of you, I'm scared. <laughs> but are you are you distracted though? Because next week is WrestleMania 40. You on a book tour right now? I am on a book tour, but I can do it all because I'm the man. You I better can do go it all. I can it. do it all. Mm-hmm. I can be on a book tour. I can be a full time mother and wife and be a full time performer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can do it all. I and still beat Rhea Ripley. And still beat Rhea Ripley. She mentioned your daughter. She did mention my daughter. Oh my what God, she, what she, said? The baby? she she said that she's going to leave a little bit of me so that uh, I can be at home watching her while my daughter calls her mommy. Damn. Wow. And uh, that wasn't in the yeah. Script. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that that fired me up. Mm. That fired me up a lot mm. because you 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 don't you don't, your kids. You don't your kid. mention my daughter. No, but also, yeah. also I. You know, I've gotten to do a lot of things that I am proud of, um, but none of it 
compares to being a mother and being mm. her mother. Mm. And so yeah, you don't you don't you mess better with be that. You know, yeah, I will. Yeah. I will. And I did, I did. One I oh, no, I sorry. yeah, I smacked her little boy toy Dom Dominic Mysterio, uh punched him right in the face. Great punch. Great I punch. Go look great. it up. Um, it was a great punch. I'm surprised he got up from it. So you guys are not friends, mm. like no, 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 no. I mean, just other wrestlers or you re- other wrestlers. You have friends, but you just don't f with her. No. So no. you see her in the street, you might give you might two piece her. Might yeah. For real. Does it help or hurt <laughs> to take all that emotion in the ring? Depends what you're talking about. Does mm-hmm. it help to sell tickets? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does it uh, hurt emotionally? Absolutely. But I think the best stories and things that people relate to. Are the things that are real yeah. so I think you need to be yeah. uh, courageous enough to put them out there because that's the they're the things that are going to resonate with people and they're the things that are going to entertain people mm-hmm. too you know and that's what people want that's why people watch wrestling you want the you want the distraction from mm-hmm. everyday life you want to live vicariously through these characters or forget about your own stuff that's have, a great thing about wrestling has everything that's been going on with Vince McMahon him stepping away from the organization has that uh, distracted the organization in any way no I don't think so I think okay. it's I think we're in in this new boom period like mm-hmm. wrestling is is the hottest it's been in in years and I think the thing is is that now we have a new focus we're all banded together in, in making wrestling the coolest thing on TV and I would say we're we're doing pretty darn well absolutely mm-hmm. well we appreciate you for joining us and good luck thank you Becky so Lynch. much for having me thank yeah. you so much it. pick up the book right now The Man Not Your Average Girl Becky Lynch fire and, cover by the way I know. Oh, thank you I know thank I love you. it appreciate you again it's The Breakfast Club it's Becky Lynch The Breakfast Club Everybody, it's DJ NV, just hilarious. Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for a positive note. What we got? Positive note is simply this, man. Be careful what you wish for others, because it just might get to you. All right. To wish bad things for somebody else is actually like looking for something bad to happen to you. Because when you wish bad karma on somebody else, you bring bad karma on yourself, okay? You are consuming and bringing in negative vibes into your life. Instead, be the person you wish they were. Be the person who brings only positive thoughts and good vibes into their own life. Because being negative yourself will only bring negative into your life. Don't poison yourself hoping somebody else will die, all right? Breakfast Club, bitches! You all finished or y'all done?